Hello everyone. Today I'm going to start a, a video on making floats. And uh, it's probably going to be part of a series. I have to make a lot of floats. And I think what I'm going to do is film everything, make individual episodes more or less for each float, and go through like I did with my hollow and round series where at, originally I had a, a, a single episode video on hollows and rounds and then I created later on another series with expanded information on how to make them. I'm going to do the same thing with floats. My first float video seems to be drawing some interest and it's very short and you can see me do the work but it's really not thorough. So I'm going to get into it. I do have to make floats so I think it's going to pay for me to film everything, to explain the process and the whys and the wherefores and everything as we go along. If you have questions, ask them in the comments. If you have a better way of making floats, jump in the conversation, tell us what you're doing, direct us to other resources. I'm making them by hand. I'm using O1 tool steel. I'm not hardening the blades. The reason I don't do that is so that you can resharpen them with a file. So I'm creating the teeth on the float with a file, and then when the time comes to resharpen them, I use the same file and just redo the teeth and put another edge on them. You can't do that if you harden them. You need sharpening stones and grinders and stuff, and I don't have the facilities to do that. And back in the day, the plane makers were able to sharpen their floats. So I'm making them more or less the same way that the old timers did. So as we go along, I'll do more explanations and get into all that other good stuff. For now, let me get set up and I'm going to start making my first float. So the first float I'm going to make is going to be 18 inches long. And I'm making it out of material. It's going to be 3 16 thick by a half inch wide. So let me get the tape measure and we'll cut, well, we'll cut it exactly in half. So this is 36 and 5 eighths. So let me just make one cut and divide it in half. So I have a regular hacksaw frame and I have a 18 point blade, 18 teeth per inch blade, nothing fancy. Let me just dress that up a little bit. And that way I won't get cut.
this end looks. Just that up a little bit. Okay, so on my floats that I made in the past, I have a 5 inch handle, then I allow 1 inch from the handle to the first tooth, so that's 6 inches. So let me go ahead and lay that out. Okay, that's the first tooth and then on the other end I'm going to leave two inches blank with no teeth so that I can grab it because I want to be able to use this float by passing it through the plane body and grabbing it and using the ten inches of teeth within the body of the blade to do the beds and the escapements and all that other good stuff. So this is going to be a custom, real custom job. I don't know if it's going to work or if it's worth it, but this is what I want to do. I see this is something that I think I need, so that's, what, that's the way I'm going to do it. So now everything in here, this is going to be a face float. So what I'm going to do is just color all this in and start marking the teeth out. There's probably a lot of different things you could use to lay the steel out. I use magic marker. Okay. So, from this end, This end I'm going to make a mark six inches, and then let's see, I'll go ten, ten more inches this way. That'll be a little, a little bit more than, a little bit more than two inches, whatever that fraction of an inch was. So now I can do two square marks across here. This is the beginning. and the end of the tooth pattern. So I'm just using an awl with a nice sharp point. Scratch right into the steel, make a real good mark. Okay. Now what I have is a flat ruler, and what I think I'm going to do, let's see if I can do this. So I'm going to make the teeth an eighth of an inch apart. So I'm just going to look over the ruler and then mark the steel. Now the way I've done this in the past is I made 
tiny little tick marks on the steel and then I took the the ruler away and then lengthened the marks with the square and so this time I'm choosing to just do it all at once this is going to save a little time and it's probably actually going to be a little more precise than basically making the mark twice and they could be a little off there's no there's nothing that says that that you have to be within thousands of an inch of the spacing I don't believe as long as the tops of the teeth line up it doesn't really matter how far apart they are So what I do is I make, I guess you could call it like a pre preliminary cut with the hacksaw. <clears throat> and the reason I do that is because I don't want the corner of the file to have to do any work. The, it, I, I can't do it by hand. I tried it already and I had a complete failure. I tried doing this float completely with a file. And when I figured out that I could make the start of the cut, the, the vertical part of the cut, with the, with the hacksaw, uh, it really solved a lot of problems. So that's why I use the hacksaw. So, and it doesn't really matter how far you go down. Um, it's not that far at all. If it's not far enough, you can finish it with the corner of the file, or you could go back and pick up the, the hacksaw again. So and then I use hearing protection because the the sound of the hacksaw bothers me a little bit of friction builds up in here so uh, this will start to get warm and then I'll use a block of wood to uh, protect my fingertips The other thing is this float is going to be pushed this way so the handle is back here so you want the vertical face of the of the tooth to be if I'm right handed the way I'm standing in front of this float the vertical face is going to be to the right of every line which is the back of the tooth and then I'm going to set the file vertically with this face vertically and then that's going to give me the cutting face I need so it cuts on the on the push stroke that's important you don't want to set the teeth on the uh, float backwards so let me adjust this light
Okay. So I could keep going with the saw. Let's see how this cuts with uh, one of the files I have. So uh, let's see. I think this one might still have some life in it. Let's try this one. Okay, so this face has to be vertical.
Okay, I got one tooth that came out real low. Either the spacing was off or I filed too deep, whatever happened. But that's fine. the idea. I'm going to shut the camera off and keep going and pick it up later. Okay, so I got most of the teeth cut. Or I should say I have most of the teeth are completely cut. So now what I'm going to do is darken the tops of each teeth some of them are high and I'm gonna switch files so I did all the rough cutting with a single cut file now I have some real good fresh double cut files and the idea the same as the uh, sharpening a handsaw is you're gonna have teeth that are at random heights right now and some of the tips of these still have part of the original surface okay so that's what I would consider high so right now that's carrying the magic marker so the idea now is to take a final few strokes with the final with the finer file and drop those teeth down so that the magic marker disappears and the tooth the, the, the tooth comes to a point when the tooth comes to a point there will be no portion at the top of the tooth that can carry the magic marker so it'll become basically zero right now there there are a few thousands of an inch wide it's a flat spot once I drop that tooth down and make the make the flat spot disappear the width of the the spot becomes zero the magic marker disappears and then that's the correct height of the tooth so and at the scale that I'm working on, the best way for me to see all that is with, a, is with a magnifying glass. So you'll see me constantly file and then go to the magnifying glass and come back. And it's just a matter of doing each tooth as you go. Um, it's all basically feel. I will say one thing, what happens, which I noticed, is, let's see, if you tip the, if you tip the, the file back too far what will happen is the flat spot will disappear on the edge closer to you right because the because the the file is dropping down I'm exaggerating it here so this flat spot is going to disappear back here 
but still remain in the front. So when you see that, when you see the, the two tips disappear like this that means the file is too low in the back so you're going to raise the file so that it's parallel to the surface and all the magic marker marks that are still remaining on here remain parallel that'll that'll be your your file guide and uh, once all the black disappears I'll show you what to do next so right now I got the double cut file and it looks like it should be pretty good. Let me use my my hearing protection. This no, noise is a little bit bothersome for me.
pretty consistent depth. They're a little deep over here. But you can see I got no layout marks. It's all basically done by feel. And the tops, the tops of the teeth are pretty much all in line. This will, I can tell this is going to work fine. So now, let me remove my earplugs. There's a burr on the back side of the, of the float. The, um, the file tears away some of the material. Clean that up. Clean that up with a stone. Okay. Now I got a piece of maple around here. So one of the other things that I do while I'm filing, sometimes the harmonics of the file and the saw uh, create a um, almost like a speaker effect, a megaphone effect right here on the bench. So I have towels double up and I'll, I'll pile them up on here and just file in between the towels so it deadens some of the sound because it will, it will be a bit of a racket with all the... Um, with all the filing and the sawing. If noise is a problem for you, you can do that. So I'm going to clamp this piece of scrap to my little elevated area and we'll see we'll see how this float is going to work for the first time. It looks good. Now, if you had to, you could color all this in and then just drop the teeth down again. But these teeth are very close. This is going to cut fine. I think this is going to cut fine. So let's see what this is going to Take the bark off here. That's more work than you're ever going to do inside of a plane. So that's fine. So now let me set up and do the other float, which will be the edge float. And then I'll prep them and I'll do the handles.